We are building the global financial and economic infrastructure for the 21st century. This infrastructure is decentralized and distributed, and it is the Bitcoin network. So many times you hear superficial arguments of how Bitcoin is wasteful and must be stopped. These arguments are misplaced and I will explain to you why. My name is David Orban and this is episode one of season five of The Context. When you think about money, there are many ways that you can describe what it is and what it does. It is a unit of account, it is a medium of exchange, it is a store of value. And in the various forms over the course of the history of human civilization, money has always reflected the particular series of technologies that were available at the time. Today, the most advanced form of money is represented by blockchain-based networks, in particular Bitcoin. And it is important to understand why they have the particular features they have and if they are fit for purpose. The purpose of money is to represent our ability to corral resources to address challenges to solve problems, to achieve our goals. In the past, for thousands of years, we have gold-backed money. And it was proof of work. Proof of work is what is the gravest accusation against Bitcoin of how wasteful it is. But think about it, in order to have gold-backed money, you, most probably a king, had to be able to discover, develop, and control gold mines. You had to be able to extract, refine, transport, and store gold bullions you had to be able to defend perpetually the store of value that the limited quantity of gold that could be found on earth represented. This was, and is still, a pretty sizable effort. That is why when you were able to show the physical gold either in your vaults or as at least in a given percentage present in the coins that you would mint, well, people were in awe. They would definitely believe in your power and in your ability to structure the resources to keep your enemies at bay and to attempt and hopefully succeed to achieve your goals. And so the proxy that your golden infused coins represented was a proxy for your ability and what the store of gold represented. More recently, uh, we have developed different types of money that were not backed by gold. For example, the United States dollar is backed by its global ability to impose the US dollar to be the only currency in which global trade in oil happens. You can think of the dollar as being backed by oil. The ability 
of the United States globally to support the discovery and the extraction and the transportation and the protection of oil and oil supplies. The economies that have not been successful to maintain uh, their currencies to be backed by gold, and this is all of them, and the economies that have not been successful in imposing global monopolies towards important sources of energy, which is, again, all of them except one, are now in a different narrative. The fiat currencies that are bagged by the sum of the ability to work of their residents and their citizens, the people who are using that particular kind of money. The power of their economy is what is backing the money. So if you think about it, gold-backed money has been proof of work. The work of extracting gold. The petrodollar represents proof of work. The work of extracting oil. Fiat money represents proof of work. The work of millions of people supporting the economy. Bitcoin is also based on proof of work. However, don't label that work as wasteful. Just like you don't label the work that individuals um, exert in each of the economies or that uh, is used to extract oil or that is used to extract gold. The fact that you look at the single calculations carried out by the specialized computing equipment that is securing the Bitcoin network and the way that those calculations are designed, it appears to you to be pointless. Well, you are looking at the finger rather than looking at the moon. Yes, the calculations are not the point. The point is that the privilege of securing the Bitcoin network requires dedication, effort, ability to evolve and to keep up with the continuous series of attacks that Bitcoin receives. Similarly to how continuously um, gold deposits are attacked, sometimes successfully, most of the times unsuccessfully. And this is legendary. There are Hollywood movies about uh, gold robberies and heists. Similarly to how the petrodollar is continuously attacked, either attacked from the point of view of commerce, where Russia and Iran and China want to trade oil between each other without using the dollar uh, as the denominator of those trades. Or, similarly to how the uh, trading routes can be uh, subject to physical piracy, uh, oil tankers taken hostage for ransom, or in the case of hot wars, sunk. The types of attacks that Bitcoin is under are cyber attacks. And these are absolutely the kind of attacks that the 21st century is characterized by. They are not successful. The Bitcoin network is today worth about a trillion dollars. It is a prize that would be pretty attractive to anyone able to grab it. No one has been. 
the nature of Bitcoin as a store of value is becoming more and more secure with every hour, every day that passes without the ability of anyone to corrupt the network. And the trust as a consequence that it receives as the basic infrastructure on top of which to build other things. So do not look at the finger, look at the moon. The reason why the Bitcoin infrastructure is um, calculating with such a degree of difficulty that yes, a lot of energy is required in order to achieve those calculations is not in order to waste as much energy as possible. It is in order to make the 21st century economic and financial network secure against attacks. And as Bitcoin is going to move from a trillion to 10 trillion and to 100 trillion uh, basis in terms of the value that it represents and it is able to secure, yes, it will meet and must address new types of challenges. We have an abundance of energy. And no, Bitcoin computers are not going to fry the world. They are going to bootstrap the world into discovering new opportunities and new ways to build a civilization. You must understand the details of this at least to such a degree that you do not fall prey to superficial analysis that are directed from the point of view of the incumbent interests, those that run the risk of being displaced and replaced by the Bitcoin network. The reason why you must understand it is because it is unstoppable. It is unstoppable not only from the point of view of cyber attacks. It is also unstoppable from the point of view of governments not being able to regulate it or to um, make it uh, illegal to own or to transfer. So Bitcoin is going to be a part of our future as it has been for the past 10 years. And hopefully you will stop blaming it to be wasteful. Look at the objectives and look at the means to achieve those objectives. Now, there are people who say, well, there are new, better algorithms that are less wasteful in order to achieve the objective of a secure global decentralized network. Well, fine. That is a fair competition. And if that network indeed is as secure or more than Bitcoin, then the value will migrate to that new network. I will have the opportunity to talk about these new networks and I hope you will be interested hearing about them. In the meantime, I want you to think about what I said and then make sure if you haven't yet to get your hands dirty, to understand in operations what the Bitcoin network represents for you today. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of The Context. I have been producing this now for five years. This is our fifth season and I am greatly enjoying sharing my thoughts with you. It is a privilege and I welcome those of you who choose to support these efforts by becoming a patron on patreon.com slash David Orban. See you at the next episode.